I'm speaking with Chris David from Majestica from Sweden. We're about to talk about their brand new album, Christmas Story. How are you doing today, Chris? Ah, Jesus. <laughs> oh, I'm doing pretty well. It's uh, yeah, It's been busy, but, uh, you know, it's uh, the weather is fine and life is cool. So, yeah, it's been great. The weather outside is wonderful. It's, like, <laughs> it's a winter wonderland, right? So Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah, so I got into Majestica last year uh with you know with your other album above the sky and uh just i mean i've always been a fan of great power metal and actually been a fan of uh tommy's other work for well over i think 20 years now whether it be golden resurrect golden resurrection or rain exceed um you played with rain exceed for one album correct uh yeah that's correct but i was i joined uh in the let's say the release phase of uh welcome to the theater so that was yeah, but I didn't play on that album. Okay. But I was there when it was released, actually. Okay. Am I pronouncing the name right? Is it Rain Exceed or? No, it's actually Rain Seed. Rain uh, Seed. Okay. Is yeah. It's a silence. Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Rain <laughs> Seed. That's. I think it, it, Rain Seed is just a made up, you know, name. Oh yeah, out it's of definitely nowhere. made up. I, I get the idea. Kind of like a King's X <laughs> thing. I, I get it. So. Yeah, well, yeah. Tommy calls himself Rain exceed so oh exceed okay the play on the word exceed okay um you know and it's interesting because even i didn't catch on last year when above the sky came out that it's like tommy from oh tommy from sabaton the guitarist from sabaton oh okay and it's like oh yeah he was in golden resurrection he was in charlie shed oh my god charlie shred i know my stuff i'm just <laughs> stuttering he was in charlie shred he was in golden resurrection and he was in rain exceed or however you say it <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, it's a, yes, yes, rain seed. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. now so it's a, it's just rain seed actually. Rain. So seed. no X at all. There's no X seed. It's just rain seed. Like it's yeah. raining and it's raining seeds. Okay, rain. <laughs> seeds. Okay, I won't forget that. It's raining seeds. It's raining cats and dogs. It's raining seeds. Rain seed. Okay. Anyway, Tommy from Rain Seed and Golden Resurrection and Charlie Shred. Um, obviously from Sabaton. A lot of people don't realize, you know, he's been with Sabaton for about four or five years now. Um, and I guess I haven't heard any of your other bands uh, that you were in or currently in, like Orise with the guitarist, also from um, Majestica and J.D. Miller. Are those just good classic uh, Swedish rock metal bands? Um, so the Orise one, we haven't, that one is kind of, uh, we, there was two albums and then we stopped that band. Uh, and then we rebranded it as Asoria, and we did a record. Uh, I don't know. That's uh, I don't know eight nine years ago now. Oh, okay. uh, and also, um, so that's been a long time. And he was also a member of JD Miller, uh, but okay. we are not in the, in that band at all anymore. None of us. Uh, so I kind of left uh, last year. I play on their uh, last record, but that's uh, you know it's a kind of. A, let's say i don't know like some kind of heavy metal uh, i think it, there was an explanation once about that band in a review that it's like the the heaviest aor rock around <laughs> well i'm good friends with uh, jan stark i used to write with him for a site for metal covenant in sweden and obviously he's written so many compendiums of the history of swedish heavy metal and now he's got you know the new stark merriweather coming out soon um when i hear jd miller i think of the tj miller the comedian here in, in the states is jd miller some a famous person in sweden that i'm not aware of or no i think it was just you know a bunch of friends who wanted to start a band and they didn't know any you know names to this for the band so they they were literally sitting in a sofa drinking Jack Daniels. Jack Daniels and, and Miller, Miller beer. beer. I was going to say, was it Jack yeah. Daniels and Miller High Life? Hey, let's name our beer beer, <laughs> band beer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's basically what it was, I think. <laughs> Honestly, when I saw that, the first thing I thought it was TJ Miller. And I'm like, no, they couldn't possibly get that connection. I'm like, wait, Jack Daniels, Miller High Life? Are they just talking about bands named after beer? Which, you know, that works too. <laughs> So anyway, yeah, exactly. all right. So now with the new album, Christmas with Christmas Carol, I mean, oh my God, first of all, I have to say is the biggest inspiration Trans-Siberian Orchestra, because the fact that you guys play classical, traditional Christmas music, so heavy metal-ish, and then still blend it in with a great storyline, obviously, a la Charles Dickens. I mean, how did you guys sit down and decide to write that? Yeah, well, so the the funny thing here is that we never thought about Trans-Siberian Orchestra when, when coming up with this idea or 
at, actually at all because that the first time we someone mentioned that it's similar to Trans Siberian Orchestra was when we uh, were talking with Nuclear Blast about the release actually because that was, they were never in our minds uh, when working on the or recording it. Uh, but obviously we we knew Trans Siberian Orchestra and what they are doing. So when he when he said it, I was like, oh yeah. Yeah, it, it is actually really similar to the, to what they are doing. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Um, and uh, but the, like the whole idea came from, uh, I think we the whole idea came that we came. The idea was initially that we came up with the like like uh, writing uh, new songs, but with you know recognizable Christmas melodies in them, and but we still wanted to keep the power metal element and like you know write original majestic music, but somehow blend them in you know uh but then after a little while tommy told me that back in the school when he was a teenager he did this musical about a christmas carol as ebenezer scrooge and he was actually acting as scrooge in the, in school uh, back then and he said like this could be a pretty cool concept to do around the album and i was like yeah yeah why not i, I know the story you know uh, so he came up with like a demo to show me uh literally what he was what he saw, like what he had in his mind when when he told me that, and I I kind of right, right away I was like this is awesome, and it's a perfect thing because the the story has you know both uh, good sides and bad sides basically. So you can make songs that is you know evolving in different styles, like more positive feeling to one song, and more maybe more dark and negative feeling to another song. So it you can kind of ha make it like a journey, which is pretty cool with the music, I think. Definitely. And I mean, you know, and the fact that, I mean, I, the more I listen to it, it's like, it's like, am I hearing Hark the Herald Angels Sing? Am I hearing Winter Wonderland? Am I hearing We Three? I mean, it's just amazing how you guys include all the classical, traditional Christmas melodies in the music, but at the same time, it follows the storyline. And it's interesting because you guys released you know, the uh, the Ghost of Christmas Past as a lyric video at first, and I think that got a lot of people hooked. And then recently you put out the Ghost of Marley actual video, which, you know, like you say, if he played, if he played Ebenezer Scrooge, then he, although I have to say, when I watched that video, I, I don't mean any disrespect, but he looks just like Sam Kennison. And, uh, you know, he's got, the, he's got the little nightcap on, he's got the long blonde hair. I just expect him to go, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> He'll probably take all yeah. of that, but it, he does look like Sam Kennison circa like 1991 or Wild Thing video or something. But anyway, um, I think it's great that, you know, you guys have that storyline. And I think it's cool that you're focusing. I mean, there's been so many renditions, whether it's Scrooge or Muppet Christmas Carol or the, the, the Jim Carrey version or the classic version. You know, I mean, there's been so many different renditions of it. And it's interesting, you guys tend to focus a lot on, like, the ghost story. I mean, a lot about the ghost of Christmas past, Christmas present, Christmas future, you know, his regrets and obviously his redemption. And you're right, that's that's a story that we're all so familiar with. It's a theme that everybody kind of gets automatically. And then you throw in all these Christmas carols, basically, in it. It's just, it's pretty impressive. Yeah, no, and the, the funny thing is that there is even more than you probably don't know them because there is a few that is only Swedish that's just, oh, yeah. you know, with Swedish uh, originally. So these are probably not even uh, known outside of Sweden Definitely. as well. So so there is even more in there that you probably don't even notice, you know. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And then and now recently you guys are just, I guess today you're, you're releasing an advent calendar with basically a little, you open up a window every day to reveal the big reveal, like like a typical Christmas advent calendar. Is is that to tie in with the Christmas story, as in like little pictures based on the 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 theme itself, or how does that work? Yeah, so that's that was uh, that was the idea of, uh, when we started working on this album that we wanted it to be. Well, I mean, if it would have been possible to play it live, like a musical, or you know, do a, you know a little special show, not like a regular rock show, that was what we wanted to do. But you know, it's uh, the COVID situation, right, so you right, can't do it this year. But, uh, you know, uh, so we um, we decided to go with, with a Christmas kind of calendar style thing. And it is uh, basically uh, a storyline. It's actually going from start to finish through the whole record. It's like three episodes of each song uh, where we are actually acting. It looks like the Ghost of Marley video, basically. It's like acting through the story, uh, through the whole album. So it's going to be different ones every day. And the cool thing about it is that some or most of the days, actually, it's uh, 
something that a lot of fans have asked about all the time since even the rain seed years. They want to hear it, the orchestral parts more. Okay. Uh, so it's some most of the days it's just orchestral music, the orchestral pieces uh, with okay. the vocals on top of them and choirs. So there's no uh, guitars or anything on them. But some days we we bring in the whole, you know, the the, the original music from the album. Um, so it's uh, yeah, it's it's like a small kind of filmed musical basically with uh, twenty. I think we are twenty five actors in the in the videos. Oh wow, okay. So it has a little bit of a theory on kind of thing to it as well with the classical elements and stuff. And it's interesting for the last 30 years, heavy metal and, and, and Christmas music has always, even before Trans-Siberian Orchestra, you know, I always remember the Merry Axmas compilations with all the guitar shredders, you know, just kicking ass and playing all these, you know, Christmas songs on guitar, you know, and then even, you know, 15 years ago, Twisted Sister had a Twisted Sister Christmas or Twisted Christmas, you know, um, Halford has now done two Christmas albums neither of which I like, but, you know, it's interesting to see even Rob Halford step out of Judas Priest and do a Christmas album. Even recently, uh, you know, uh, John Schaefer and Matt Barlow from Iced Earth are doing Christmas songs. I just heard today that, you know, um, Irion is doing a Christmas song. So it seems to be something that, you know, people are doing. And maybe since 2020 has been such a challenge, we need something that's going to warm our spirits, you know, something that's going to, you know, help us get through the rest of this year. So... And we all yeah. know <laughs> they're all in our <laughs> unconscious, whether we exactly. like it or not. <laughs> exactly. That, that, was, that was also one of the ideas, because, you know, at the start, when, when this whole idea about the, this album came about, we were actually writing demos for the follow up to About the Sky. But that was just in the beginning phases. We, I think we had five demos, but, you know, that album was still at least a year away until it would be done. But then, you know, when all this shit really happened, it, it was the right time to like hey let's step out of the comfort zone and do something special and christmas is like the right time because well you couldn't make something for summer because that was too short time but you know it's it's a perfect time because it's you know no one has been able to go to any shows and probably lots of people around the world have not even been able to you know go see their families or anything so yeah, yeah. so it, it, it was like the yeah exactly so it was like the perfect thing to do this year i think to to make it, make it something special and then Christmas was the right place. And it looks like I think a lot of people or most people is not going to celebrate Christmas either together this year. So I, it's, it's, I, I think it's pretty cool that we could arrange this and at least give them music to listen to on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day or something like that, you know. I couldn't agree more. I mean, this is, there's just been so much tragedy and so much chaos in 2020. And then I find myself listening to this album and I'm suddenly instantly cheered up in a better spirits. Um, it's funny because I'll always be whistling Christmas songs and I hate Christmas music. I can't stand it because, you know, I worked, you know, retail jobs where all they did in the in the in 90s was play Christmas music ad nauseum. And you just it, it you got so sick of it. You didn't want to hear it anymore unless it was like a Christmas special or something. And, you know, it's just, it's like I say, we all know the songs unconsciously. We just, we know Jingle Bells. We know Silent Night. We know Come All You Faithful. You know, we just, even if it became, you know, we're not going to take it. Um, you know, any of that kind of stuff. <laughs> I, I have to ask you, even on Above the Sky, you guys were setting a standard for something a little bit different than your, your, your typical Halloween, Gamma Ray, Stradivarius, you know, type, you know, power metal. When I first heard Father Time, I was like, what in the hell is going on? This has a little bit of Ed guy in it, but it has a little bit of tongue in cheek. And I mean, it's like, you know, these guys are mixing it up. What was the inspiration for Father Time? Because that is one messed up track, but I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that track is uh, actually, I I was, that track is super old, actually, I think. Because Tommy old. did it. Because okay. uh, he, he did it on YouTube many years before Majestic really? existed, okay. but he, yeah, but he took it down because he, he didn't like the production of the the, the thing he did back then. Okay. Uh, and then he, when we were writing the songs for About the Sky, the idea came around that we should use that song because there was there was always lots of comments about where is Father Time, why you should put that song up again and stuff like that. And so I was not even around when he did that song because it's so old, actually. It was, I think, I don't know when he did it, but it's probably, you know, 15 years ago or something like that. Well, even Futureland, uh, the bonus track says 2002, and I was like, well, what, what band was he in 2002? Did he have any affiliation with 7th Avenue even, or? No, the, uh, that was Futureland, I think, was, I think the version, the, the 2002 version that is in that album is actually the first song Tommy ever recorded, like he got recorded in a studio. 
uh, when he did vocals and guitar, I think. Uh, and uh, so that was the band, that was like the early beginnings of the band Rain Seed that later on now is Majestica. Okay. And I joined the band Rain Seed, you know, back for, in, yeah, that's probably almost 10 years ago today. Yeah, right, right. And actually, yesterday, Tommy told me that he figured out that it's 19 years ago since he started uh, Rain Seed okay. and that uh, Future Land was actually the first demo that was that band for 19 years ago. So that's why we put it on the um, put it on the Majestic album and did a remake because then it kind of yeah you know the, the circle hit hit its end you know. <laughs> Tommy must have been a big fan of Seventh Avenue um, out of Germany as well with the current guitarist of uh, Tankard. Um, they were a Christian power metal band that were kind of doing the Blind Guardian speed metal thing, but also having a little tongue in cheek action and songs like Father yeah. Time definitely sound like that and then of course you do the space ball covers by the spinners which you know i mean we all love the movie but the song is kind of goofy what made you choose that song <laughs> oh you know that's the thing that's also been around all the time with, with uh, rain seed and yes again it's a lot of movie we are watching a lot of movies and you know rain seed did an album called welcome to the theater which is only based on basically different movie themes right i know and, I'm well, yeah 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 uh so we when we did the, uh, the about the sky record, we were like, "Hey, let's let's choose something that is, you know, sounds like '80s and it has to be a bit funny, but also that we can make a pretty cool Colorado." And then we ended up with Spaceballs, literally. Now you have a uh, your own label called Moving Air Music. What is that exactly? Uh, yeah, so that was a, that was a, a music uh, label I started. Uh, I don't know when really, 2014 maybe. I don't know. Okay. Uh, uh, that was my. I wanted to start a record label, so I just started one. And I was in a band called Captain Crimson at that time, uh, and we had the, the second album on the way, and it was just the perfect time to start it. So I re released it on my own label, and um, then I have released a few different bands. It's mostly been, you know, uh, kind of like stoner rock, retro oh, rock, okay. Doom, okay. doom rock stuff. Uh, but uh, lately, I haven't really had time. Uh, to work with it so i haven't done any release now for like two years i think okay and i'm not i'm not sure that i'm going to continue with the the record label part of it not for now at least because uh, i mean it's it, majestic is pretty busy and i'm also you know bass player in other bands and i'm doing like session work and and i'm teaching and there's so many different things going on so i, I put it aside a little bit it's more acting like a management kind of thing these days because i'm you know i'm kind of managing i'm the manager guy around majestica so it's kind of okay, okay. taking care of a lot of business around majestica as well so it it ended up like that and then i'm also working as an audio tech so oh yeah touring audio tech with like bands in sweden uh or like shows in sweden so yeah moving our music became a record label that later on kind of became a management and audio tech firm somehow <laughs> <laughs> so you manage Majestica yourself. That's you actually are the manager and tour manager for that band once the band actually gets back on the road. Oh uh, yeah, exactly. Okay. Now in the Ghost of Marley video, you actually do a kick-ass bass solo, which shows that you're not just your average bass player in the in the kind of in just playing bass. It shows that you obviously have some serious bass talent, kind of almost like Steve DiGorgio or uh, Mike LePon from uh, Symphony X and countless other bands that I love. Um, so. It says you say it says on the liner notes that you do vocals, but do you sing or do you backing vocals? I am Marley on the on that track. I am the other voice. Okay, you are, I am. You, are you dressed as I Marley am. in that video? That's you dressed as Marley. Yeah, that's me. Oh, okay. Well, that's good makeup. Whereas Tommy looks just like Sam Kennison. Okay, okay. So you are doing, <laughs> you are playing characters in the in the on the album. Okay, so yeah, yeah. So who are some of your bigger bass uh, influences? Are we, are we talking the, basically like, you know, Getty Lee and Steve Harris or maybe more obscure or? No, it's I, I would say it's Getty Lee, you know. Uh, of course, Geezer Butler is like my favorite because I'm, you know, I'm a huge Black Sabbath fan. I know. Which... I know. God, his bass tone is amazing. Yeah. And, I you know, I played the same brand as he does. I kind of, he's like my biggest influence, I think. Um, but also, I mean... Cliff Burton and guys like that. Uh, yeah, and also, if you. Okay, yeah, I get that. Okay, okay. 
<laughs> I mean, yeah, if you look back at the at the Above the Sky record on the Above the Sky track, you know, it's a pretty it's actually an insane bass intro on that track, right, and then it right. has a and it has a pretty cool bass solo with like a sweeping part and all that stuff. But it, on the video, it's a Rickenbacker similar to what you know uh, Cliff Burton used. Uh, and also, uh, Glenn Hughes has been a really oh, huge influence lately because I really like his voice, and that's and I've been following him along on his, you know, the, the Purple Tour and the Black Country Communion stuff and all that stuff he has done lately, and he become maybe one of my favorite bass players now. And also, I just love his voice. So he was like the, the big inspiration for me to really get started on my singing a few years ago, and now I'm doing uh, bass and vocals on this uh, this album on two tracks then um but yeah so i'm the ghost of marley on the on the video okay. I, th I think i think glenn is working on a brand new dead daisies um as vocals as well as bass but you're right so many bands that he's been an out of even like seven star which is highly underrated people don't even think of that as a sabbath album but wow but um it's interesting because you say that when i thought of that when i heard that album last year i thought of magna rosen uh, when he was in Hammerfall, like Legacy of Kings type, when he was playing bass like that. But I'm sure he obviously would be influenced by Glenn Hughes and some of those bands as well. So that makes sense. Now, who did the cover art for Christmas Carol? Because that really stands out. It's very colorful. Um, is that one of our more famous heavy metal art uh, artists? or? No, that's that's really funny because the one who did the Christmas Carol artwork uh, has never done an artwork before. Okay. Well, he's obviously influenced <laughs> no. by... Marshall and some of the other ones, but okay. Yeah, the thing was that we, she has done, uh, she's a kind of unknown artist, but she has done lots of like uh, fan art for, for Twilight Force and stuff oh, like Twilight that. Twilight Force, okay. Yeah, I think, I think it is like that. I don't really know uh, the story, so I'm not gonna, you know, but I think she did a lot of fan art style stuff okay, as sent okay. to Twilight Force. I can see that. Yeah, I can see the Twilight Force. I mean, I love power metal, but I like it more like, you know, like I just interviewed uh, Pete Seal from Iron Savior, and that's more metal with power metal edges. And I love Gamma Ray and Halloween, you know, but the, the stuff that's just so too much keyboards, too much just it's, you know, which I think Majestica has a perfect blend of that. I mean, you obviously embrace, you know, more bands like Sonata Artica and some of their styles, but you also show your roots um, getting back to their, like I said, when I said Hammerfall with Magnus Rosen, Legacy of Kings you know, or some of that early, you know, Swedish power metal stuff. Well, it wasn't even really power metal when it was first coming out, even, you know, early stuff, um, he heavy load and all that kind of stuff, which is good to see that, you know, you guys embrace that too. And I had no idea that you guys played Swedish traditional Christmas music, because you're right, I'm American. I know all the songs that are traditionally American, and that's cool that you guys include that in your music as well. Um, I think a lot yeah. of fans will find that very inspirational as well. <laughs> I th yeah, I hope. <laughs> you hope. <laughs> and Nuclear Blast, when you said, okay, we want to do a Christmas album, they just said, oh, like Trans-Siberian Orchestra, they just kind of just, you were like, well, yeah, but still. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But I guess when we said that we want to do it, they thought it was going to be some covers or something. You know, they didn't really realize it was the, what kind of style yeah. we were doing, you know. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, and that seems to be seems to be what, like I said, a lot of artists are doing right now is they're just taking their, you know, t take on any of these heavy metals, any of these classic traditional songs and giving the heavy metal twist and stuff. And I think that's what's interesting is when you listen to this, you follow the storyline and you follow the characters, which still has a Trans-Siberian Orchestra feel because they've done that as well as, in, you know, brought stories like even the Night of Beethoven. Um, but this, or even, you know, uh, Christmas in Sarajevo uh, was Sabotage. But at the same time, um, it's still it, the storyline. And I love the way it begins with an intro and ends with a, a, a just instrumental, which is all Christmas music. And it kind of culminates with that. But it still has, you know, and I think it's great you guys, for lack of a better terminology, touch on the cliff notes of A Christmas Story because it's, it's such an in-depth thing. And we've seen so many different renderings. And, you know, but if you actually read it, there's a lot to it. It's a lot deeper. And it seems like you guys just focus on, you know, basically – his who he was, who he becomes, and his re redemption, which is good because you even talk about, you know, ha you know, at the end, which is great. Um, now, was that Tommy's idea in general to just focus on a Christmas story, or was that a band collaboration, like to pick the Christmas story as the Christmas theme? No, I'm, it was his idea. As he, as he mentioned when he was that he did this musical back in his teenage years. So he, right, right. when he put the idea in, we we really. 
well, we got going on it right away. We thought like, because he kind of presented it like in, he, in a cool way. He was like, I have done two songs here when I'm actually doing this story, like, you know, in this musical style. So here it is. What do you actually think about it? So he kind of really, he didn't show us anything really at first because he didn't want to, you know, just say something that, like, I want to do this Christmas story thing. What do you guys think? Do you, Should we, you know, want to discuss it? He wouldn't, because he kind of, I, I know he really likes this story and he is, I think he has seen every movie there is, every, you know, and read the story for real and stuff. So he really wanted us to be, you know, excited about it right away. So he really put effort into to showing us his idea after we came up with the idea that we wanted to do this Christmas thing with the recognizable melodies. So he wanted to convince us. So he really put a lot of effort into that, really. So it, it was really, it, it, when he showed it, it, everyone was just, oh, it's awesome. You know, the idea is perfect. We want to go with this. So we, there was not even a discussion at that time. It was just. So when you take, Hark, this you take Hark the Herald Angels sing, you're like, okay, how am I going to come up with a chorus that fits the perfect theme of a Christmas carol? <laughs> and the, the storyline to, to match the music perfectly or to take, you know, all these other Christmas songs you know, even the Swedish based ones, that's, that's actually pretty bl brilliant. That's not easy to do. You know, um, although I find myself kind of changing lyrics all the time to Christmas songs to fit themes of, you know, certain things, but I, I get that. That's awesome. And it's just so inspirational. And I think, yeah, I think you guys picked the right time because you probably didn't know going into it what 2020 was going to be like and how much tragedy would befall and how many people would die and how many natural disasters and how much political upheaval and so much stuff would happen in the world. And what we need going into since yesterday was Thanksgiving and going into the holiday season is uplifting, cheery music and not just the traditional Christmas songs that we've heard so many times that we want to slice, slice our throats. So when we listen to this, it's like this is a little different. This is Trans-Siberian Orchestra 15 years later with a strong power metal vibe. And I think, you know, Tommy made the right decision at the right time. He was definitely guided and, and inspired. And I'm glad the band has come together and been able, you know, you're just a four piece, right? Yeah, 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 it's a four piece. So who plays it's... the keyboard then? <laughs> um, the keyboards is mainly Tommy as well because he's a pretty good keyboard player. Okay. Uh, so it kind of works out like he's the guitar player, vocalist, keyboard, keyboard player. Wow, he is multiversal. Uh, okay, okay. And your bass? Yeah, player? yeah. Okay, all right. I'm doing the bass. I'm doing the uh, voc uh, vocals and a couple of tracks, and then yeah. and then I'm also doing the sleigh bells uh, on the album. <laughs> the sleigh bells. <laughs> Now, if, 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 say, in a year from now, everything's copacetic, we all got our vaccines, where everything's, you know, kind of, I don't want to say normal, because I don't like the new normal terminology, but let's project ourselves a year from now. Can you guys see yourself doing this as a full production on stage, you know, doing the whole thing with, you know, the state, you know, all the people involved, you know, as a tour type thing, like Therion kind of would hope to have done had this not happened as well? Yeah, well, absolutely. I think that was uh, that is what we really would like to to happen. But you know, well, we don't know if it's going to happen or if it's right. going to be next year or in two years. But absolutely, that's uh, that is what we want to do. We really want to put it on on the road and to make it all theatrical, like uh, we have done with the calendar and the videos and all that right, stuff. The calendar, yeah, to coincide with the calendar. And that's you, that advent calendar. It, since it's leading up till Christmas Day it can be used every year. It doesn't, it's not something that's a one-time only thing other than just changing the date. Um, so people who don't embrace the calendar this year because they can't see you live because of all the, you know, 2020 nonsense, this time next year in 2021, if you take it on the road and do the full production value and stuff, they can still get the calendar and say, okay, let's follow along the storyline and everything like that. Um, you know, now what kind of versions is this going to be? Is this going to be CD, vinyl? I mean, obviously I just got a digital promo now, but I mean, what, what is Nuclear Blast offering? bands for this so it's uh, only cd actually um, all right no vinyl <laughs> no and this is this is really sad but this is actually because we were the the whole idea became come to alive so late that okay. we actually missed the date <laughs> for pressing vinyl because we hadn't even started recording in the beginning of august um so yeah <laughs> so we're actually that it's I hope we will see a vinyl yeah, somewhere in the future. Yeah, probably will see vinyl down the road or even within a year. So I'll probably look forward to just getting the CD. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Well, good good for you then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, what would the booklet be full of cool, like, Christmas-type lore and pictures and everything? Uh, no, the book, uh, booklet will be the story, basically. You will have all the lyrics, and then there will be 
uh, there is some, um, yeah, well, you know, photos of the band and stuff like that right, in there. Right. So it's it's mostly the story its focus is on in the in the booklet. Okay, so um, there's no like artwork like that cool awesome cover. The artist didn't do any more like artwork for the storyline in the booklet itself. Okay. No, it's sadly not. Uh, I guess that was also a bit of the timing issue that happened because it was so stressful to make this album because the idea came around a bit late. Uh, And so what happened is that I have the pretty cool mirror in my bedroom that I took a photo of and kind of did it uh, in a drawing style like it is on the album and put like the band members in there and it looks like in a, you know, Two, three, four hundred year old uh, mirror, oh, okay. and then the band okay, okay, that's cool. yeah. yeah. So I did that and put them in, uh, put every one of us in each, like it, it, our own mirror style way in there. Well, I hope it's only 150 years old if it's Christmas story, because <laughs> Gerald Dickinson, <laughs> uh, definitely 19th century. But no, I get it, and that's cool. So, all yeah, right, it's just, it's just. It's just looking old. Like it's right. Yeah. It's, it's, it's anti- yeah, I get it. It's it's antiquated and aged, and that's good. It's probably got that sepia vibe that you know gives that sense of 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 the old, which is good. So, all right. Well, thank you very much, Chris. I appreciate you sharing you know everything about Christmas Story with me, and also everything else that goes on with you and other members of the band. And like I said, ever since last year when I got Above the Sky. You know, I was like, this is the kind of power metal that I love. And then there was just songs like Father Time and, of course, your cover of Spaceballs. And then when I saw you guys do it, a Christmas album this year, I thought, well, that should be interesting. And then as soon as I got a download promo and I, I, I burned it on CDR because, yeah, I like to play CDs, um, I started playing it. And me and my wife was like, what are we listening to? This is great. <laughs> it's so catchy and so fun and so, you know, inspirational in a time of such misery and ruin it's just good to listen to something and then you you know so i look forward to the whole storyline since i've only got lyrics to ghost to marley and ghost to christmas pass i look forward to the lyrics for the other four five songs since the first song and ninth song are instrumentals but yeah definitely yeah so, yeah cool awesome. awesome all right glad to hear you again. talk have a good night day yeah you too and also uh merry christmas to you yeah you too thank you very much happy holidays <laughs>